So friends, uh, this is Dr. Dhawan, your ENT faculty and uh, Dr. Azam with me, our anatomy faculty and we present to you another case of ENT anatomy integration and this is a child now which is suffering from rheumatic heart disease and now presenting the ENT OPD with the voice change guys. Can you understand the cardiology patient presenting to the ENT, ENT. OPD with the voice change, very interesting clinical scenario and what has gone wrong in this patient guys. This is the beauty of you know the integration you know where you are super clear about the anatomy and you can think about disorders and can bring a very rational diagnosis in your mind i would request dr azan sir to you know sir choices are very very you know close the right sln or the left, left SLN, sln or the right rln the left rln which nerve has got paralyzed in this particular case sir yes sir see sir i'll tell you one thing like you know first of all if the students are now reading the four options now Two options they can eliminate very easily, sir. Yeah. Two options can be eliminated very easily. Why? Because if you see in the options there, it is a paralysis of a right superior laryngeal nerve, then the paralysis of left a recurrent laryngeal nerve, then again left superior laryngeal nerve and right. Now, out of all these four options, I will straightforward eliminate the superior laryngeal nerve from here, sir. Superior laryngeal nerve, I'm going to eliminate from here. Yes. As you said, it's a very, very interesting case correlating cardiology with the ENT. Yes. So, if you see the positioning of the heart, the superior laryngeal nerve is given way above here. Yes. The superior laryngeal nerve dividing again into internal, external laryngeal nerve supplying to larynx. Mm -hmm. So it's way above here. It has no relation with the heart. Yes. So I can eliminate two options. So again, the same thing as students always tell us, sir, in the exam, we were able to eliminate two. We were, you know, uh, confused between the two options here. Yes. So now coming to these two options, recurrent laryngeal nerve. So I'll just show one diagram here. This will give a very clear idea. Now, when you see the course of recurrent laryngeal nerve, sir, or the right and the left recurrent laryngeal nerve, if you see the course of that one, the right recurrent laryngeal nerve is actually going down, going down, but it is going to take a turn around the right subclavian artery. Yeah. So, right subclavian artery here, here itself is going to take a turn. And yes, the name itself is telling recurrent. It is going to come back to the larynx there. But whereas the left recurrent laryngeal nerve is going down and taking a turn around the arch of aorta. Mm -hmm. So, it's taking a turn near the arch of aorta. And if you remember, near the ligamentum arteriosum, near the ligamentum arteriosum, that is the place where it is going to take a turn. And then now, I hope it's giving a clear idea in your mind, okay, why it is related uh, with the heart. So, in uh, rheumatic heart disease, when there is cardiomegaly, so this is the nerve which is very much nearby. Mm -hmm. So, there are chances that this nerve might be getting compressed. Yes. So, anatomical basis, I just want to, you know, repeat that for the last time. Right recurrent laryngeal nerve will be turning around subclavian artery and the left recurrent laryngeal nerve will be turning around the arch of aorta. Yes, sir. Can you just help us with the wonderful. further this one? So, guys, uh, wonderful description and sir beautifully ruled out two choices. SLN, name is SLN. Superior laryngeal nerve is going to be close to base of skull origin, sir. Yes, exactly. And uh, it never touches mediastinal structures. So, as you very rightly said, the right also is taking a turn right at the root of the neck. You root of the neck, right, Touching exactly. the apex of the right lung and goes back over there around the subclavian artery. Yes. But the left one is going to dip down into your mediastinum and then, you know, at the level of T4 approximately, sir, if exactly, you can say. Exactly, exactly. You know, it's going to loop around the arch of your and go yes, back sir. over there. Yes, sir. So, guys, the more anatomical relation means more chance of complication. Just like life, sir. Exactly. You know, <laughs> so, you know, rheumatic heart disease means patient will be eventually developing atriomegaly, sir. Mm -hmm. And the left atriomegaly, pressing the left RLN, mm -hmm. causing left vocal cord paralysis, is called cardio-vocal syndrome. Mm -hmm. And more commonly, it is called, very popular question also, this is called Ortner syndrome, guys. So, this clinical entity in which rheumatic heart disease patient has developed voice change is called Ortner syndrome. It will be cardio vocal syndrome. Heart problem causing vocal cord problem will be Ortner syndrome. Sir. Wow. Guys, in this particular question, you can also interpret one more clinical scenario. Mm -hmm. A patient of aortic aneurysm presenting with the vocal cord mm -hmm. issues. Exactly. So, again, if aortic aneurysm is causing voice change, sir. So, I think you would agree with me, it's again left arm left getting arm. paralyzed. Absolutely. Sir. Guys, I have a question to you. Again, the same context. If a patient is suffering from the pancos tumor of the right lung, mm -hmm. you know, pancos tumor of the right lung means the tumor of the apex of the right lung. Apex of the right lung. And the patient has developed the vocal cord paralysis. Again, what has gone wrong? Because the right RLN, as you very beautifully told, is going to take a turn around subclavian artery, almost abutting against the apex of the right lung. Apex of the so right. the pancos tumor right side is going to press the right RLN. Absolutely. And hence, it's going to cause the vocal cord paralysis. 
So answer of this question as sir very very easily told us that the answer of this question will be of course D left RL. So the answer is B sir. Yes sir. B wonderful. The B is the answer sir. It's a beauty of integration. If you would really see that if you are clear about your anatomy that how recurrent right side and left are different. So you can really interpret a lot of clinical situation out, out of that. Absolutely. Thank you very much sir. Welcome, Thank you. Sir. Keep learning guys. Thank you guys. Keep learning.